Hey everybody, Mike Pfeiffer with Pfeiffer Hobby Supply. Um, I got some uh, backdrops up here. They're the Instant Horizon wood uh, Walters uh, backdrops. And um, I have a lot of guys occasionally, a lot of guys, ask me how do I cut it and then add it add the scene to my sky and then put in the details that I cut off and I'm going to show you how I do that okay as you guys can see and as you probably have done once you cut these off you'll notice that you lose your treetops um, and you can color in a lot of things like the smoke and, and stuff from the mine and things but I'm going to show you um, how I do it and how I get that effect back on to my backdrop okay so what I do is I save one of the pieces I cut off and this is a good one because it has multiple colors of trees and multiple tree types the mountains I'm not so worried about because I cut them off on purpose so that it looks different but you can see that we have some different well you could see if I could hold you there we do have some different colors of tree tops and then in some of these larger tree tops we have multiple colors within the tree top these are pretty easy to recreate I, I will I don't make them as tall as what they were on the original backdrop I just take them beyond the backdrop and make them look a little wispy but what I do is with those colors, I just get a bunch of, a symbol, basically, a bunch of green colors that seem to be some of those colors. And I will also have a little gray, and I will also have somewhere here, I have black. And between all of those, and mixing them together we'll be able to come up with the colors that are there in fact black is actually a color that's in those trees uh, we'll worry about the trunks after we get the tops painted but uh, I'm going to attempt this tonight and see if I can do a little better job than I have in the past so let's give this a shot okay I've shown you the paint uh, I get a small butter dish of water doesn't have to be the cleanest one in the world, it doesn't matter. All we're going to do is rinse brushes out in it. Um, Robin was nice enough. Usually at every Christmas, I wear out brushes pretty good, pretty good. so she buys me a, a, a bunch of brushes and puts them in a little container for me. So I have all kinds of brushes here that haven't been used yet. I have fine ones, coarse ones, and the like. And we'll just see what works for us. I did find my black and I did find well, that's what I thought was white but it's gray I have a darker gray also and I have a brown for trunk I have a brown for trunks also but um, the palette is my most important tool um, but I'm gonna try and do a little bit of it here and see if I can get the camera set up somewhere where you guys can actually see what I'm doing I probably will wind up being in the way a lot but here we go okay I don't know if you guys can see this I'm working I don't have two cameras but anyway I've got some of the darker greens here and what I'm gonna do is start just blotting some stuff up there more or less kind of dry brush style, in other words, get most of it off the brush. When that dries, it's going to be kind of the darker color, obviously. And we're going to come up here and just tap a little bit of top on this one. And a little bit up. A little bit up. Make half 
happy little trees. No, we're not making happy little trees. We're making my own trees. Now you can see that the color of those is pretty good. Um, what we can do, like on these right here, didn't quite, quite come out the way I wanted. So what we're going to do is we're just going to dab some of that color on down the parts of that tree that you can see. And uh, when that dries, it'll look normal. We hope. got to kind of you got to kind of just use your judgment as to where these blocks belong and i can see right now that i need a little black in there and i need a different brush to use as well so I'm going to mix up the brushes a little bit. So I'm trying to find something I like. This one's a little bit on the... This one here is a little bit on the um, fine side, I guess. Not pointed side, I guess I would say. And I'm dipping it in the black, and I'm dipping it in the green as well. And what I'm doing basically is darkening up the green to almost black. And then we're going to just come in here, and we're going to just touch some spots. I think we may have to wait till that dries a little bit before we do the black. The black is turning out okay, but it's wiping the green off. So we're going to bypass the black for right now. I'm going to stick that in my water, save that brush, and we're going to go back to just adding the green. I'm going to blot a little bit of the black green. see that that already looks a little better on that one with the black more black in it um, we're gonna do the same thing over here And this really isn't, honestly, it's really not rocket science, and I don't know how well it's going to turn out, but when I've done it in the past, it turns out well enough for this guy. Some of this down here on the paper already is pretty much dry and and uh, it's mixing right in. Um, like I say, it's it's not a perfect world, but it beats trying to cut around all these trees, I'll tell you that. We're going to come in also and put in this these lighter greens after all this dries, by the way. So we're just getting the dark colors to begin with. What we're trying to do, basically what we're trying to do, is get just a leafy look along the top edge. And trying to get 
trying to get this to look like pine trees and we're also trying to cover up the edge, the white edge of the paper. Um, and like I say, you just have to keep blotting and looking and blotting and looking and see if it strikes your fancy. Um, and then we're going to put, we're also going to put trunks in later. So it's going to detail them up some. We have some lighter greens over here along with the dark. So we're going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stipple in some lighter and darker black over here. I think you can see how that goes. That's pretty simple. And we got some light green. on this guy here and I just got some newspaper here I really should have some a paper towel but I don't so we're just gonna wing it and I'm gonna go with some of this light green and we're just gonna bit of that light green in that one and we're gonna put a little bit of light green in these guys over here like so now it looks to me like we have too much green in this guy so now we're going to go back with a little bit of the black. And I think that's starting to look like something. And, and as you can see me doing it, on this brush, I cut some bristles out of it. I just cut straight into it, cut some bristles out of it. And I just keep dabbing it, using it. You can see how I'm using it, just by dabbing it. And you don't want the, you don't want the brush wet, so you always got to dry it off a little bit. And uh, we're going to go with really light green up in here. green up in these guys and you don't want to push real hard on the brush you just want to let the paint transfer off the brush onto the the trees themselves and now you can kind of see that that's taken shape has taken shape um, like I say it's not perfect but it does give you the uh, effect that you're looking for of the tree going up off of the off of the uh, backdrop. I'll get over there on the other side and do man well, maybe I'll do those later. But I'm gonna work my way over this way and just try and finish this hilltop here. And I'm gonna blot in a little bit of the you can see the blue through the trees and that's kind of what we want. But we're missing there again we're over here and we're missing the green. I got to do the top of that tree and it's a little bit difficult because I don't exactly know where it's going but I'm going to concentrate on these guys over here on the side first
And you can see how dabbing the green in actually brings it, brings them out of the black back to the scene itself, you know. Uh, now what I think I'm going to do, and that stuff's still pretty wet, but I have some brown here. And if you look at this trunk right here, brown on one side and a, and a brown black on the other side. Well, we have black out here already. Ooh, that's not very brown. Hold on, let me find a different brown. Um, yeah, maybe it's okay. Let's, let's try this brown. It looks way too light. But uh, let's see what we can come up with here. Try and get my brush dried off a little bit and get some black on there just even to begin with because it is way too brown. I believe. And I know this is going to be hard to see and it's not too easy for me to reach, but we're going to go in here and we're going to put some trunk in there. Now see, the trunk doesn't have to be perfect because it's very small. And you just see it through the tree. So you can see what a difference that made. Um, let me just, this one here doesn't have too much showing trunk, but we're going to try and add a little trunk to it. This one here does have showing trunk. Let me get a little more trunk color. Just gonna put a little tiny bit of trunk in there. And you can see how much that helps it. I'm not gonna go wild with the trunks, but trunks over here are very, very dark. So we're going to darken up our brown almost to a black, black, brown, or gray. Actually, it's making kind of a gray. And we're just going to put in little pieces that don't even hardly show. But when you look at it from a distance, you can see it. I think we're pretty much done with that little section right there. Uh, with the, well, let me do the middle tree. I forgot. I forgot we didn't do the big tree in the middle, which is kind of the elephant in the room, right? So let's dab that one in. Okay, just as before, we're just, we're just dabbing, and I need to dab a little bit darker. I think we may have the combination of two trees here. And I'm thinking that that looks pretty good. We need to get a little bit of... You know, we need a little bit more dark. Hold on a minute here. Let me. And I don't clean the brush all the way out. I just wipe the color off onto the paper.
and I'm going a little too heavy with my pushes there. But now we have that tree where we want it to be. We got to go back in and just lighten it up some. Too much green over here so we're just going to give it a little shot of darker black along with it. I have a little green black mix there and we're just going to, oh, it needs black period, and we're just going to dab some black. And I think that's pretty good. Let's put it this way, it's as good as I feel like doing it. Um, we're going to put a trunk in that tree there, and I might try and reach those over there. I guess I should probably try and reach those over there. So, But the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and blend these two hills in a little bit, bit right here where the seam is. That drop's not sticking too good there, but i got to get all the green off my brush first thing. Got to get all the green off. And we're going to try a little bit of brown and a little bit of black. And we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to start stippling here. And you can see that it's just disguising that cut in the paper pretty well. And the green, in this case, the green is just representing whatever was on the ground. Okay, everybody, hope you enjoyed that uh, mini tutorial on uh, how I accomplish that back there. Um, not a lot to it as you can see. Uh, you need to just experiment and experiment and you can experiment on something that's not your permanent backdrop. So uh, I would give it a shot and as usual, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.